Personally, I have never written a Toshinori fanfiction, alias All Might. I still hope you enjoy it, my lovely darlings. But before we dive right into it, I would like to remind you to watch the video until the end, like or dislike and comment your favorite part of the video down below, or just comment anything down there. Just anything. Even if it's a question, I maybe even answer it. Uh, lastly, I also have a Patreon and a merch store, would be nice if you could check both of them out. And if you're new here and you think I'm worth it, please hit the bell icon when you subscribe. Now please, enjoy the show. Things were bad. All Might, the symbol of peace, had retired. And suddenly, every little piece of scum and villainy awakened. The only thing missing were riots. And if social media was to be believed, if any policeman were to arrest some of a mutation quirk, and that person just would happen to, for example, OD on whatever crap was currently sold on the market, this entire powder barrel of a city would erupt. Luckily, you had office duty. You couldn't fathom the stress your colleagues were in. A few years ago, you had joined the police force, mostly due to your quirk being useless and a borderline disability. You had been working overtime almost every day since All Might was gone. An insane amount of work piling up by the hour. And while many of your co-workers seemed to handle this new work environment fairly well, you and a few others were going through hell. With a heavy sigh, you stamped the last work paper of the day, before leaning back in your seat. It was till a.m. by now. You were in your fourth hour of overtime. This had to be illegal, right? You rubbed your eyes and stretched in your seat. All you needed to do now was put the papers away and then you could leave all this stress behind. The only relief of this madness was the fact that after today, you officially would be on vacation. With tired eyes, you slowly delivered your filed work to the various workspaces, getting a few comments as to how you should take it more easy, and how you're completely overworking yourself, and what the hell you were still doing here. It was actually somewhat nice. Like a comfy hug from a family member before leaving on a train to... somewhere. Now, with heavy lidded eyes, you walk through the neon doused streets of your home city. It was raining. Not heavy enough to be uncomfortable, but still enough to be of note. You considered buying something to eat, but the only places open at this time of night weren't really your taste. So eat it up pizza from yesterday it was. You were halfway home when you felt something was off. A weird feeling of being followed and or watched. While walking, you glance towards any reflective surface. Why were you feeling this now? It was as if your emotions and logical thinking were breaking out into an all-out war. All your anxieties slowly began to rise. Why were you thinking this? What triggered it all of a sudden? Sure, there were people around you, but no one was looking at you, right? Right? Were you doing something you weren't aware of? Your heart began to drone out the sounds of the rain. Clutching your keys, you slowly began to increase your walking speed. By the time you reached home, being in an all-out sprint, with shivering hands, you just barely managed to unlock the door and enter. Before you just simply slid down behind its cool metal. 
You called an imposing apartment complex your home. Only the emergency lights were lit at this hour, but that was okay. Out of breath and close to crying, you sat there on the moist stone floor. With your normal thinking returning ever so slowly. You thought of possible reasons for this panic attack. Closing your eyes, you slid further down. Stress was the only thing coming to mind. This had happened before. Shouldn't that make you used to it by now? You closed your eyes, your eyelids feeling like sandpaper. When feeling calm enough, you went back on your feet. Body feeling very sore. Slowly you dragged up the stairs of the complex, despite you knowing you had a vacation now for roughly six months. It had still managed to be a surprise, so you didn't have anything planned. When you reached the door of your apartment, you sighed in relief. You had managed to not panic the entire walk up here. Your keys twisted and the door opened. With a nervous smile, you walked towards your kitchen after closing the door behind you only to be met with a shock similar to that of a heart attack. Your fridge was open, the door covering the upper body of a person. You took a quiet step back, glad that you weren't fully paralyzed by fear. Clunk. The intruder had dropped a can of beer. Right. You didn't have any beer. Oh, crap, said the intruder before bending down to pick up the drink. Wait, that voice. No way. T Toshinori? You felt your stomach turn. The can dropped once again, and the man quickly closed the fridge. The man in front of you, Toshinori Yagi, Alias, all mine. You never thought you'd see him again. A heavy blush was on your face. <laughs> hey. He started as he rubbed the back of his head in embarrassment. I was planning on waiting outside, but the drinks would have gotten warm, so I invited myself in. Your lips quivered. Why, Why, why are you here? You felt tears run down your face. Within two steps, he was next to you. I'm sorry, I didn't realize. You and All Might were in a relationship a few years ago. It was short and secret. More romance and talking than hugs, kisses and sex, but when the media had gotten behind it and was about to publish your address, he quickly broke up with you to protect you. Seeing him made all the pent-up emotions that just a few minutes ago forced you to rush home, break through the dam. You began loudly sobbing as you wrapped your arms around him. You wanted to scold him for invading your home unannounced. You wanted to shout at him for leaving you. But your loud cries swallowed every attempt at forming words. Toshinori raised an eyebrow before awkwardly wrapping his spindly arms around your slender frame. I'm sorry, he whispered in your ear. I should have called you, but I haven't really had much time to think. He wanted to let go of you, but your own arms embraced a skeletal form. I'm sorry, he repeated. With his right hand, he gently started combing through your hair. It took you about ten minutes of seemingly endless sobbing before he could finally let go of you. He gave you a reassuring smile. 
Guess you haven't gotten over me, huh? You nodded before adding, Not just add stress, anxiety. They even put me on office duty because my hands are too shaky to properly use a gun. You paused before loudly wailing, They took my gun, Toshinori! Well, you always liked that thing. Your gun was a symbolic replacement for your useless quirk. It had made you feel safe, despite never having to actually shoot someone. I just wanna quit. Toshinori sighed. I have a few things I want to discuss with you. Nothing bad. Promise. On shaky legs, you walked into your living room, Toshinori close behind you. You sat down on your sofa while he took a chair to your opposite. First, I want to apologize for never talking to you after the breakup. There was regret in his voice. I should have at least stayed in contact with you. He scratched his chin and thought. One of my many mistakes. I'm sorry. He paused. And I'm going to try and stop saying sorry so much to get the point co across quicker. You nodded in response. Truth is, now that I'm retired, I would like to try being with you again. You felt your eyes widen and face heat up. You would be in less danger from the press. Are you sure you just don't want me to pity you? Because of what happened to you and your quirk. He chuckled darkly. In truth, I was always looking for a way to get back to you. You know my quirk can be inherited. So when I found the right candidate, it was just a matter of months. He bit his lower lip. I mean, you gotta agree. As long as I was the symbol of peace... We would have had, ironically, gotten no peace on our own. Sure, it worked for you a few months, but... You shook your head. Oh, she... You muttered quietly. I don't think I can handle another breakup. He ground his teeth. I wasn't planning on doing that ever again. Your lips quivered... As more tears ran down your face. Are you planning this all along? No. You looked up into his face. Do you understand how horrible these past weeks were? Toshi, the entire country is going insane. There was no contingency plan. The people idolized you so much. And now they're all demoralized. They have... This... This country has become weaker with you. I know. Nothing could have prepared Toshinori for this. He had expected you to have moved on and now be taken. He expected you to cry and demand he leave. What he didn't see coming was being told what everyone else had been telling him to this point, especially Aizawa. You were about to break out into tears again when he broke the short silence. I never stopped thinking of you. Your heart felt like it had been squeezed hard by the hand of death. You felt both cold and hot at the same time. Toshi. I... Your brain felt like it was about to break. I want to be honest because stress, it's been a lot and I don't know what would be the right choice here. He gave you a hopeless smile. I mean, we are both hyper-emotional due to the things that have happened. You swallowed. 
and I want to try, I think. You shifted in your seat. Please, hold me again, Toshinori Yagi. You made room for him to sit next to you. Slowly he approached. After carefully sitting down next to you, he once again embraced you. You could feel his warmth, hear his uneven heartbeat. I love you, he whispered softly. Why? Why does being an adult have to be so difficult? You cried into his shoulder. <laughs> 